for another episode of Let's Talk Real Talk on location. We're here in the office of Rex Butler, Attorney Rex Butler. And at this time, I'm going to have him introduce himself. And we're just going to find out a little bit about Mr. Rex Butler. Amen? Mr. Rex Butler, could yes, you introduce yourself? Um, my name is Rex Butler, and uh, I'm a practicing lawyer here in the state of Alaska. I've uh, been practicing since 1983, um, and I've been in the private sector for, since 1985. And so uh, I'm blessed to, to, to have been here this long. Amen. Uh, Amen. To, you know, I've had my health and strength this long yes. as well, because you know this is a uh, this is a stressful business, mm -hmm. very stressful, and you know it's not always uh, it's not always glamour. Mm -hmm. Some people might think it is, but it, it really isn't. Amen. So now. What brought you to Alaska, or were you born here? I know well, some of the people came up on the pipeline, and they had children after they were here, and they've mm -hmm. been here for many years. Or did school bring you here, or just kind of share that little journey with us? Well, you know, um, I was uh, finishing up my second year of law school at Howard <laughs> in uh, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and uh, there was a uh, moot court assembly, which means, you know, the law, entire law school assembles in the moot court room. And the dean at that time, um, Dean Wiley Brent, mm -hmm. um, he had made an announcement that there was a, an alumni uh, of Howard University in Alaska who was looking for uh, a law clerk or an intern. Wow. So I'm from New Brunswick, New Jersey. I've you know, heard very little and knew very little about Alaska at the time, uh, but I uh, decided well, it's going to be the summertime. It can't be too cold up in the summertime. <laughs> yes. So I grabbed up my winter clothes and uh, headed up to Alaska. Of course, this was before the internet. Yes. So, yes. A lot of things. Uh, I didn't have much information, but uh, it was a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. It rained a lot that summer, mm -hmm. but you know what? It was just so beautiful. I grew up in New Brunswick, New Jersey, so I'm used to city life. Yes. And, uh, you know, I spent time in uh, New York with relatives, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and so my, my, my sphere of movement was small. Yes. Um, and, uh, of course, Washington, D.C. is being the city that it is, it's yes. very, very large mm -hmm. in terms of people during the daytime. Yes. You know, uh, and so just to be in a place where there weren't that many people, mm -hmm. no traffic jams. <laughs> yes. You know, you could get, back then, you get any place you wanted to be in 10 to 15 minutes, which is a far cry from, from down to over 48. Yes. So, I decided, I, after I finished law school, I came back up here in 1983 and, and again worked for Mahala Ashley Dickerson. She was the first black lawyer in Alaska. She was the first, uh, you know, of course, the first black female Yes, I heard in about Alaska. her. And uh, she was quite the trailblazer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she helped to reinforce discipline and, you know, commitment to the law. Mm -hmm. um, she was a great mentor for me. Amen. So, how many years have you been here now total? Uh, I've been here since 1983, so it looks like 33 years this month. Right? Mm -hmm. 33 years. That's awesome. So I know in some practices or in some businesses, um, they offer like outreach for youth, uh, trouble youth, or just youth in general, like camps and things like that. Or are you involved in any type of uh, outreach or even just, um, you know, when they have the youth court, uh, children, youth that are in trouble, uh, assisting in any area with placement, if they are trying to get on the right track, they may have made some mistakes, but at this time they're trying to get on the right track. So are you involved in anything like that or uh, any type of religious um, outreaches for trouble youth? I've been involved with um, youth court 
mm-hmm. as, an, as a teacher, mm-hmm. instructor, mm-hmm. Uh, for the young lawyers oh, wow. of youth court. Um, and so I, I've done that, um, and I've contributed through, um, they have uh, a, pro- a program that raises money. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done that. Um, and my daughter, my middle daughter, mm-hmm. Octavia, mm-hmm. went through uh, youth court and uh, was one of their attorneys. In fact, uh, she's one of their outstanding attorneys. Uh, wow. They ended up giving her a scholarship uh, to go toward other uh, monies that she was raising for college. And she's a senior awesome. now at, awesome. uh, at Howard. Wow. And I have a daughter, my youngest one, is mm-hmm. a senior now at Spelman. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so happy about that. And my oldest daughter graduated from Florida A&M University in mm-hmm. Tallahassee, Florida. Are they following dad's footsteps in the law or are they uh, are venturing into other things? Well, I think that they've all thought about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Octavia, the one who's at Howard, is probably, if it's going to be one of them that decides to become a lawyer, I think she would be that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and my son is... Uh, he graduated from the Fry Institute, mm-hmm. um, and uh, he works and lives in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And my oldest uh, daughter, who got married last year, yes. also now lives in Kansas City, Missouri. Mm-hmm. So one of these days, I'm looking forward to going down there to see a grandchild. <laughs> I just left her last week. Oh, did you? <laughs> yes, my family in Kansas City for Mother's uh, Day. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Um, I know that you, there are various areas in t- uh, law, uh, and your specialty, I think, is accident and injury or something my like prim- that, correct me. My primary specialty, uh, and we don't usually use specialty okay. uh, in Alaska, but my primary mm-hmm. focus mm-hmm. is uh, criminal defense, uh-huh. and we also do um, automobile accident cases. Mm-hmm. I see. So for people that may have an interest or just say it's, it could be someone that uh, may be contemplating a career change mm-hmm. and they may be leaning toward the area of studies that you have completed your education in, what type of advice could you give someone as far as I know you mentioned earlier, it is stressful, it's not as easy as it seems. What type of advice would you give them uh, if they're just kind of off of the well, maybe thinking going down that particular avenue um, of study? Pointers that you might be able to give some people that may be watching, uh, things to look out for, things to consider to see if they really want to pursue this particular career field. Okay, several. Um, I tell people often that this is the top profession Mm -hmm. in the world Mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that because Mm -hmm. lawyers are involved in practically everything okay there's nothing really that goes on in this world that lawyers aren't involved in Mm -hmm. some way shape or form you know we advise presidents and Mm -hmm. and, and leaders we advise uh, corporate presidents Mm -hmm. and uh, board members um, and we advise consumers, uh, we advise business people on all levels. Mm-hmm. And so, and you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, we, there's a lot of litigation in, in America, mm-hmm. in, this, in, in society. And uh, most of the time, of course, the wars are involved in that litigation representing people who have a, a some sort of disagreement with another person or a company with them, or companies against companies mm-hmm. and certainly um, there are states against states mm-hmm. you know states against the government and people against the government so it's the top profession in the world so you can't go wrong by going to to law school and getting a law school education mm-hmm. uh, and we're and you know um, when I went to law school um, it seemed to me that most of the people that went to law school studied political science. Yeah. But uh, law schools have learned that because lawyers are involved in, 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 in every aspect of American society, mm-hmm. that it's better to have students who have 
divergent interests. So yes. you can get a bachelor's in physical education mm -hmm. and go to law school. Yeah, you that's see. what I was wondering. I said, you know, for people that may be contemplating a change of career and would they have to like start all over or some credits may be able to carry over that they may have taken from some other career, you know, or is, this, is it just that stringent? So now you're telling me and telling the audience it's that very you diverse can now. be from a, another career yeah, that doesn't absolutely. have anything to do with it. But you don't have to start over as long as you have your basics? No? Not at all. Wow. In fact, uh, uh, a friend of mine who practices law here in Alaska mm -hmm. uh, earned his bachelor's in classical guitar. Wow. So he knows a lot about music. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't uh, practice in the area of music or representing musicians or things of that nature, but he yeah. probably could. Mm -hmm. And I would suspect that uh, an artist a musical artist um, who heard that there's a lawyer who's got a bachelor's in classical guitar, yeah. they would say, well, this person probably understands me better than some lawyer who just has a bachelor's degree in mm. political science. Mm. You see? And so what, what, where would you derive that uh, analysis from since you said that they would understand? Well, for example, mm -hmm. um, if a person represents a nurse, mm -hmm and maybe my undergraduate degree was in nursing. I can talk the language with the nurse. I can understand mm -hmm. probably what that nurse um, wants, what the, how they approach the controversy that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've been there with you. I'm part of I'm one of you. Mm -hmm. just, I just happen to be a person who went on and, and, and got a law degree. Mm -hmm. Same with a teacher. Yeah. You know, teachers always have bargaining agreement issues, especially mm -hmm. when it comes down to new contracts, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes for employment purposes, uh, they might there might be grievances against the teacher or mm -hmm. employment actions being taken, mm -hmm. and the teacher needs a lawyer. What better person to represent you than a lawyer who was a teacher, wow. you see, who had the teacher credentials at one time. Mm -hmm. And same with sports, you know. What uh, better person to represent you as an agent, perhaps, mm -hmm. or a lawyer seeking uh, redress for your contract breaches, mm. you see, yes. uh, than a person who has been a sportsman in the past themselves or got their degree in something related to sports, mm -hmm. undergraduate degree. So the law is so diverse now, mm -hmm. and, and uh, law schools are so alert to that. Until mm -hmm. now, it's a wide open field you can have any type of undergraduate degree you, you want and you can still go to law school. Um, mm -hmm. A friend of mine in law school who was a jazz musician mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. he said he wanted to have the law school education so that he could, rep so that he could represent other musicians mm -hmm. in terms of contracts and things like that. Yeah, I, I can see that it would be important because there's so many people that get um, misled Absolutely. and they're signing their name and when it comes to royalties I've heard of different stories and the royalties are not there or they've signed everything over to, to that particular else. and Maybe. they don't have and they're wondering why they're not getting much money and they didn't read the fine print or it wasn't actually explained or they didn't even bother because they were so excited to take it to an attorney or lawyer per se to look over it because a lot of them they didn't really have the money mm -hmm. but in hindsight, if they would have uh, really, really thought about it before they gotten themselves into something that they can't retrieve their money or their royalties, and just to see. And then some is just set up like that, and they are raking the people or raking sure the are. people. But a lot of them are getting smarter now. Um, I've seen various things, um, artists, so many years have passed where they own your rights and then you can get it back. Um, after 30 years, like clauses and Take things. Take control of your own life again. Yeah. So that's awesome to know. So what would, um, I know it probably depends on the season, what would a day-to-day -day basis be like, or if it's a particular part of the season, um, in your profession you said there are certain things but you have a specialty. Uh, if you could share with us sometimes how chaotic it could get or 
just an idea of how a day-to-day -day business is ran, or if it's like, say, peak season or something, or is there a peak season? Okay. Uh, for a lawyer, mm -hmm. one of the most important things is your calendar. Mm -hmm. Because you want to make sure that you don't miss hearings, mm -hmm. in particular, mm -hmm. or appointments. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's one of the most important things in the life of a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Another very important thing is confidentiality. Yeah. That's rule number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lawyer must be able mm -hmm. to maintain the confidences of their client mm -hmm. through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. And so, um, day to day, like for example, this morning, mm -hmm. um, I did a nine o'clock arraignment, which means a, a new case mm -hmm. for a client. Um, and after I finished that, I returned to the office. I've got mail folders to work on, mm -hmm. you know, mail that is coming this week that needs to be processed, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. I'm currently also looking over this uh, federal information regarding some property that was forfeited mm -hmm. in a drug case, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that uh, my client gets some credit for the forfeitures of a co-defendant because they created it just as a conspiracy. I see. These people working together. Uh, I've got an appellate brief here that has to be uh, reviewed uh, right here. Uh, I need to get that done. So, one second. When you say arraignment for someone that may be viewing the show, what does the word arraignment mean? It's basically your first appearance. Okay, your appearance. And uh, that's when the court will set bail, mm -hmm. bail conditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll find out then what your charges are, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll find out whether you're going to have to sit in jail or whether um, you got released on your own recognizance or whether you can go back to work, go back home, you know, whether you can leave the state. Mm -hmm. Lots of things are taken care of at an arraignment, but generally an arraignment, once your case is called, will last two to three minutes. Mm -hmm. But it's not unusual for you to be one of many people sitting in court being arraigned on new charges. Wow. And so it's it's basically initial appearance, first appearance. And you mentioned something about a pellet brief? Am I saying that correctly? Yes, ma'am. That's after you it's generally after the case is over, if you did not get the results you wanted, mm -hmm. you had the ability to file an appeal. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that the uh, higher court, with multiple judges, mm -hmm. will review mm -hmm. the lower court's decisions mm -hmm. in the case and determine whether the opinion or judgment of the lower case of the lower court, excuse me, mm -hmm. stands, mm -hmm. or whether um, they're going to remand the case back mm -hmm. uh, for further proceedings or for a new trial. Or Mm -hmm. for any of those things. Mm -hmm. So appeals are very, very important to any defendant mm -hmm. uh, who loses a criminal case and any plaintiff or defendant mm -hmm. who loses in a civil case. Mm -hmm. So the ability to have a higher court review mm -hmm. the procedures and things that occur in the lower court. Mm -hmm. now, get, now getting through law school, for example, let me just mm -hmm. add this. Um, basically, there are three rules mm -hmm. that I tell students about when I speak. Because sometimes I, I'm invited to speak at schools yes. to students. Um, three rules. One is always go to class. Mm -hmm. Rule number two: always take good notes. Rule number three: always do your homework. Those two, three rules, mm -hmm. and any student can be successful in any classroom in the country. Yes. You see, you've got to always show up so that you get the information. Yes. Always do the homework because mm -hmm. that helps you to retain the information for a test. Yes. You see, you got to always go to class and take good notes mm -hmm. because taking good notes is a way of just planting something in your brain. Mm -hmm. 
so that you can recall it for test. Mm -hmm. Just like going to class, listening to the discussions, listening to the teacher, participating, of course, mm -hmm. in those discussions. If you do your homework and you go to all the classes mm -hmm. and you take the notes, you can always participate in the discussion in any classroom. And especially mm -hmm. when you get to law school, mm -hmm. you need to go to classes, you need to take good notes, mm -hmm. and you need to do all of the homework. Now, I heard you uh, a little earlier when you explained uh, about, you know, when you have to go to school and uh, what have you and pay attention. Have you encountered, I know they have a thing where they say writer's block and this profession is a particular type of profession that's high stress. When a student is studying and they're trying to get through uh, their courses, I know times have changed, but maybe not just that much. What could you tell uh, the viewing audience that may be uh, considering uh, this profession, ways that they could study to get past the block to focus, because they have to be focused because of the type of career. Well, I know any career, you have mm -hmm. to be focused, but there are some uh, career fields, fields, I guess, say, like this one, it may be what we call high, uh, <laughs> high energy or high I'm stress. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, they may be having a problem and they, they're they having exams and they're going through the things. Uh, it could be personal things that may be distracting them, but what could you suggest to them to focus, maybe like study groups, or is it some people don't study well in groups and some people do? You know, what would you suggest? Well, I would suggest that they listen to those three keys that I told them about. Mm -hmm. Because as long as you go to all the classes, mm -hmm and take copious notes, mm -hmm. you see, and do all the homework. Mm -hmm. Even if you get a blank for a moment, yeah. it won't last long, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And that's basically uh, the way to get through law school. That's how I got through. Yeah. You know, I was working, um, you know, I worked a full-time job when I was working on my bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. and, was uh, it in, in the law field or in another field? No, I was actually, uh, Part, part of that time a journalist oh, yeah. and part of that time an x-ray tech mm -hmm. um, because I learned that in the Navy. Yes. So I out of high school into the Navy, yes. four years in the Navy, then out into college. Mm -hmm. And so um, and I worked, you know, five days a week, three to 11 was my shift mm -hmm. at the uh, city hospital. Yes. And uh, I did my classes in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when I went to law school, um, I didn't work my first year, which I'm glad of, because mm -hmm. you know, first year is really the uh, most important year. Mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because that's when a lot of students, you know, drop out. Yeah. The first year, they mm -hmm. have a huge class, mm -hmm. and by the time they get to the second year, they have an average size class. But anyway, uh, I worked seven days a week in, in my second year of law school mm -hmm. and in my third year of law school. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, you know, I was no stranger to work. Mm -hmm. I had to do that to get through yes. to pay bills. You know, I was married, uh, yes. two children. Yes. Um, but the point I'm making is that it's about desire, too. Yeah, that's the key right you there. You know, what do you want? Mm -hmm and how badly do you want it? Mm -hmm. And so um, I was blessed to, even though I was working seven days a week, uh, you know, I graduated number 20 wow. out of a That's class awesome. of 180 uh, some students, That's awesome. you know. And I missed the top 10% by s some hundreds of a point. Yes. And so <laughs> I always think about that, you know, from time <laughs> to time, you know, so, because uh, when you when you think about things like that, then you think about classes where, you know, just a, um, a little higher grade here and a little higher grade there. Mm -hmm. But you know, it really uh, once you graduate, it really doesn't doesn't matter. Yes. You know, you can find a job, mm -hmm. uh, or you can go for your for yourself, go yes. for what you know. Yes. And so, uh, it's never held me back from being able to to work. You know, that's an awesome point that you made. There are a lot of people that feel that it's impossible to hold down a full-time job and still make the grade. 
and you're proving that you're an example. And even when I remember back of stories of uh, various uh, 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 people that I have read about in the past that became doctors and other lawyers and high stress jobs because they had to do all types of jobs in order to still pay their rent. Sure. And, and still some of them, they were married and had children such as yourself. Sure. And they still worked. And sometimes I look nowadays, some of the um, students seems a little bit spoiled. They, it's good to be privileged to have family that can send you money and pay your rent and take care of everything. But there are people that are in those situations where they don't have that luxury. And Small even still percentage. today, even today still. So that lets me know, and it reminds me even more, that anything is possible like you said the desire if the desire is there and if the will is there you can do anything the yeah. word of God clearly tells us that he says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and with and faith without works is dead that's right. so that that's that's word there and you have to and I was gonna also say you gotta mm -hmm. pray yes yes because you're gonna have to pray for strength now yes. I was fortunate and blessed that uh, I had an opportunity to work midnight to eight yes. at a night as a night desk clerk. Mm -hmm. So sitting there as a night desk clerk, midnight to eight gave me plenty of time to do my homework. Oh yeah, that was a blessing. What a blessing that was! You could read. You didn't have to move around a whole no, lot. You wasn't at working all. like an assembly Not line labor, job. Not labor, no. That hard. Yeah, that's was, awesome. And then on the weekends, I cashiered mm -hmm. at the National Institutes of Health in. Uh, yes. In, uh, in Maryland, mm -hmm. you know, but um, you know, Sunday night through Thursday night, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I worked uh, as a night desk clerk. Yes, and you know, it was it was a godsend to tell you the truth. Yes, that's exactly what it was. So now, what year exactly did you open up your practice, and where was your first location? Give us a little memory line. July first, nineteen eighty-five, mm -hmm. at Sixth uh, and K Street. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think the permanent fund dividend is in that building now. Yeah. So right there was our first, and this was my location right after that. Mm -hmm. and I've been here for over twenty-five years. Yes. Yes. I used to hear about you for years, but I never met you. And then I happened to run into you in the post office one day, yes. and I was <laughs> like, and I was like, I heard a lot about you. I saw commercials that you. I used to see a lot of commercials. Mm -hmm. I lived in the valley at that time, my family and I, and I was such a rich butler. And you know, I got a. Um, I did never meet the fa the famous uh, the first female lawyer, but I was here that first year, and then she had passed away. I was yes, doing a lot of history. Say. Yeah, black history thing out in the valley. I was part of that, helping to get that off the ground at the time we lived out there. And I regret that I never met her. Uh, not like a chauvinistic thing, but it impresses me when I see females in certain fields, especially when they are what I say mature or seasoned people because of the era that they came up in, it wasn't that easy. And so for them to have to persevere through and still make it and was willing to go wherever in the world that would open a door of opportunity. And hers was here in Alaska and yours was here in Alaska. Because she had practiced in two other places. Yes. Um, I think Arkansas. That's my home. <laughs> and uh, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Before she came up to Alaska. Yeah. 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 AAA. Alabama, oh, Arkansas, Alaska. Yeah, wow! Isn't that something? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And she was uh, she was highly respected. Yes. I yes, remember I one that. time uh, a lawyer came by, mm -hmm. you know, and she had introduced me as her intern. And, mm -hmm. You know, the lawyer and I were talking just casually, and he said, "You see those mountains out there, right?" Mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah, I see them." He said. Those mountains are littered with the bones of lawyers who underestimated M. Ashley Dickerson. Now explain that to us. She used to, we used to underestimate her, obviously, because she was female and she was black. Yeah. And she would walk out of that courtroom with the victory. Wow. He said those bones, he said those mountains are littered 
with the wow. bones of lawyers who underestimated and actually took her so I'll never forget it. And she always had favor on her side. She had favor on her side. She was, you know, a God fearing woman. Yes. And uh, she loved the profession just like I did. Mm. I mean, she would uh, drive in from the valley mm -hmm. each morning early. Yeah. And she would do dictation and lay out the work she wanted done. And by the time the rest of us got to the office. Yes. She had enough work for everybody to do for the whole day. <laughs> she sure did. And she would wow. be the first one to uh, get up in the morning and get down to the office in the valley. Yes. Drive in every day. That passion. Yes. Yes. But to have the work laid out for mm. the secretaries and for the law clerk, what she wanted done. Wow. That, that inspires me. I'm, I'm not an attorney, but just some things that I'm trying to get accomplished. The discipline. You know, sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm getting a little too old now. They're looking for the young faces, but I still have that passion, and I, and I, and I believe that things will change. I believe that God will connect me with the right people yeah. that will help me with this vision, you know, and, and, um, and be happy for me and happy with me, yeah, as long as not against me. God connections. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, at this moment we're going to take a station break and we'll be back and we're just going to tour uh, our attorney Rex Butler's office and see what his um, uh, law practice offer for the community here in Anchorage, Alaska. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we have came back from our break and um, Attorney Rex is going to give us just a little overview of his office here in Anchorage, Alaska. This is the family wall. Family wall. Victoria. She's a uh, teacher mm -hmm. by profession. Yes. And she's in Kansas City with her new husband. And uh, she is working on a master's degree mm -hmm. at KU. Uh huh. My son, Nigel. Mm -hmm. He's uh, working for AT&T. Awesome. And uh, he has his degree in uh, telecommunications management. Here's Victoria again. Mm -hmm. Octavia. Mm -hmm. Now look at that. <laughs> One of a friend of ours bought this for her. Yes. When she was, well, you can see how small she must have been. <laughs> Future lawyer. Wow. And uh, she is studying for the LSAT, the Law School Aptitude Test. Okay. And uh, so there she is again. And Sinclair, mm -hmm. the, baby, the youngest. And I've got, of course, older pictures of, of her. Just things that I've collected over the years. Yes. You know, um, and, you know, I've gotten, I've been blessed with certain awards. Yes. Over the years as well. Yes. Um, yes. And of course, my girls, the, young, the youngest two. Mm hmm. You know, and then I've got this one here, which is that's Victoria. Mm hmm. Octavia. Mm hmm. And Sinclair. All right. <laughs> This is awesome. And uh, things I've collected over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an Omega. Mm -hmm. So I've got my little dog team there. <laughs> and uh, other things that I've collected over the years. I've got things I've gotten, you know, in the course of, of trials. Like this. Yes. You see those two liquor bottles? Well, one's R&R &R and other's Royal Crown. Mm -hmm. That was from a, a bootlegging case we won. Wow. So I just wanted those two uh, exhibits as, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just souvenirs. Okay. But again, it's just, you know, I am the kind of person I don't throw anything away. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> now this little thing here. Mm hmm. Someone gave me that when my son was born. Mm hmm. And. My son is 37 years old. Uh-huh. He'll be 38 in September. Uh-huh. Yep. Awesome. And let's see. Let's uh, look out here. 
Okay. Okay. James. You don't mind, James? Not at all. You don't mind? I don't. Okay. And this is George, the brains of the operation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right here. <laughs> We're both Navy. Well, so y'all had a little camaraderie, right? We did. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. <laughs> this is Miss Julie. And this and area is your... She's our paralegal who keeps it going around here. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Francis, he's a law clerk here at... Um, the practice, Mr. Rex Butler, Attorney Rex Butler's office. This is just another department. Sometimes when Lisa's not here, Raven takes her place. This is Raven. <laughs> and this office is what, um, Attorney this Rex Butler? This is where the criminal work gets done. I see, I see, I see. It's like kind of like a library, all of the material, study material. Yeah, at least it's the criminal paralegal here. Wow, this is awesome. And of course, all of this is going to be a dinosaur now that everything is digital. Yes. <laughs> Nobody really buys books much anymore. Yes, but everything so is online. But so I am the dinosaur, so I keep buying my books each year. And keep, <laughs> <laughs> I just refuse to let go. <laughs> Somebody's got to hold up the end. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, nowadays, you know. Right. Uh, it's all about the, your, the cell phone. And yes. Pull up the, the citations and pull mm -hmm. up cases and everything. These young lawyers, that's what they do, you know. Yes. And so they're trying to pull me into the 21st century. I know that is kind of even a little hard for me. I'm working on it too. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Sometimes they, uh, Just getting a key. He's going to show us his conference room. Key cards for clients and things like this. This is wow. when I met Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran. He was here to give a speech in Fairbanks. Awesome. Um, and I was blessed with the opportunity to enter, uh, not only to interview him, but to yes. introduce him for his speech. And of course, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now we're entering the conference room of Rex, Attorney Rex Butler. This is awesome. Very awesome. We have some various articles on the wall. Very handsome conference room. So this is our little war room. Yeah. Like when we're uh, preparing cases sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, lay out our files. Mm hmm. Plan strategy. Yes. And of course, the wall back there represents my Omega Sci Fi affiliation. <laughs> I'm a life member. Okay. This is a very handsome office. Thank you. Very and, nice. Uh, also, uh, my fraternity meets here once a month. Okay. All right. There's a big Alaska fish. And that is a real scent. Really? Wow. That's awesome. All of the law books. These are the United States Supreme Court reporters. United States very, Supreme very, Court reporters. Very, very old. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, leather, almost leather bag it, it books. Is leather. Yeah. And copyright 1901 by Lawyers Cooperative Publishing Company. 
Wow. Report of cases argued and judged mm -hmm. in the United States, in the Supreme Court of the United States. Wow. August and December terms, 1801 and 1803. Now that's a long time ago. That's, that's a, two lifetimes for me. That's a, <laughs> that's the beginning. Yeah. That now is. that's for a, the state of Alaska or just in general? No, this is the United States Supreme Court. Okay. Alaska, DC. This is okay. The highest court in the land. These are the, these are the reporters from them. Yeah. So I just don't even, you know, touch them very much. Yes. Uh, I really am proud of this little collection here. Yes. Collectors, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, some they're things old. you just can't part with. You know, they're just part of you. We know we have this ever-changing society that we live in, and just some things are just um, you just can't let go of. <laughs> just to look at them to see where you've came from. And of course, we know where you're going with this technology and stuff that we have. Well, at this time, I want to thank our viewing audience for just, you know, listening at um, Let's Talk Real Talk um, on location at Attorney Rick's um, Butler's office here in downtown Anchorage. And I would like um, Attorney Rex Butler to close us out if he wouldn't mind with just a prayer and a prayer of encouragement to someone that may be struggling with career changes in the marketplace and just share a prayer of encouragement. Dear Father in Heaven, thank you. Thank you so much for all of your blessings. Thank you for keeping us going over the years, through lean years, through tough times. You've been there for us. You've been there to help us and allow us to help others. We are blessed beyond words because you said that you would never forsake us, and I am a witness. You've never forsaken me. You've been there for me through every turn, even those times when you had to carry me yourself. I was not able to make those footprints in the sand. Please continue to stand by me and to bless us so that we can continue to help people in the Alaska workplace, in the Alaska, the great state of Alaska, dear Father in heaven. And please inspire those that might see this uh, episode and inspire them to be what they want to be, to be all that they can be. Thank you, dear Father. Amen. Amen. And still be in the workplace and serve the Amen. Lord. And the marketplace, Jesus was in the marketplace as well. And he ministered and he shared and he knows that we have our various vocations and that he said he gives us the power to get wealth. Not only to hoard it up to ourselves, but to be a conduit. We are supposed to uh, share and to help other people that are less fortunate that may be having some type of struggles. And so we thank you once again for joining us on another segment on location with Angela Rosa's show, Let's Talk Real Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Stop executing children. That is awesome. Yeah.